Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. It's all kicking off in the South American country of Ecuador. Crisis in Ecuador where the president has declared a state of emergency authorizing the military to step in. The situation playing out live on the air as masked gunmen storm a TV studio in the middle of a broadcast. A moment of utter horror broadcast live on television. Armed men with balaclavas over their face broke into the set of this public television channel in Ecuador while it was live on air brandishing guns and what appears to be explosives. It comes a day after the country's new president, Daniel Noboa, declared a state of emergency yesterday. Ecuador has been rocked by a series of attacks after the apparent escape of a powerful gang leader, Jose Adolfo Macias, from prison. Known by his alias, Fito. He's not just any escapee, he's the leader of one of the most powerful drug gangs in Ecuador who vanished overnight from a high-security jail. The president ordered the military and police to intervene in controlling prisons in an attempt to tame the violence. But the violence has exploded further since then. Following Fito's escape, incidents have been reported in several prisons across the country. Inmates were seen standing on roofs as they held prison guards hostage inside, threatening them with knives. President Daniel Noboa said he will not negotiate with terrorists, and the government has blamed recent incidents of prison violence on Noboa's plan to build a new high-security prison and transfer jailed gang leaders. Ecuadorian authorities say seven police officers have been kidnapped. The country's president has now declared an internal armed conflict targeting nearly two dozen gangs the government is describing as terrorist organizations. This follows the escape of now two gang leaders and dozens of others of men from prisons. With Ecuador still on high alert, fear for citizens there remains. So as you've just seen, the relatively newly elected president, Daniel Noboa, who came into power in November, is now having to deal with wide-scale riots, both in prisons and potentially on the streets of Ecuador, as a result of public enemy number one, Fito, escaping from prison. And I'm sure this wasn't how the president was hoping 2024 was going to start for him. Now, initially, when I put this video together, I was going to include an economic update on Ecuador because it's a country that I have covered before. However, there is just too much happening to be able to fit all of that into one video. So if you would like to see an economic update, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do that as a follow on to this video. So in today's video, we'll start off by looking at the problems that Ecuador is experiencing as a result of drug trafficking and the gangs. We'll then have a look at Fito's escape from prison and the associated manhunt that has been put together by the Ecuadorian authorities. We'll look at the riots that are going on all across the country in the country's prisons. And these have been organized by the gangs because most of the people in prison are related to the gangs. We'll then talk about the crackdown on gangs that David Naboa is trying to organize. He's trying to do something similar to what's happening in El Salvador, where Naib Bukele has built the largest prison in the world. And obviously that news hasn't gone down very well with the gangs in Ecuador. They don't really want him to build a prison on the same sort of level as what they have in El Salvador. We'll then have a look at the recent live TV broadcast that was invaded by gang members who are carrying rifles, pistols and hand grenades. We'll talk about what's happening in politics in Ecuador. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think is likely to happen over the course of the next six to 12 months. But before we get started on all of that, once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to everyone that's supporting the channel. If you bought me a coffee or sent me a YouTube super thanks or signed up as a member or a patron, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. Ecuador is located in northwest South America and has borders with both Colombia and Peru. It's actually one of only two countries in South America that don't have a border with Brazil. In recent years, Ecuador has been living through an unprecedented security crisis fueled by drug trafficking that authorities have failed to address turning it into Latin America's most dangerous country. But the main thing that, that people are talking about here is just the 
utter power that the drug gangs in Ecuador have acquired over the last several years. The homicide rate here almost doubled between 2021 and 2022. This man was constantly talking about how Ecuador, in his view, was becoming what he called a narco state, where these gangs were just running around rampant, doing what they willed. And, you know, according to the United Nations uh, report on, on drugs and crime uh, from last year, they said Ecuador is the third country after Colombia and the U.S. where the most drugs are seized. What that means is this is a country of transit. This is a country where drugs that are consumed in the U.S. and that are produced in Colombia continue to wreak havoc and ever more so. This is Jose Adolfo Macias, better known as Fito, the leader of the powerful Los Choneros gang in Ecuador. Sentenced in 2011 to 34 years for murder and drug trafficking, authorities found Adolfo Macias' cell empty on Sunday, the day he was scheduled to be moved to a maximum security facility. Two prison guards have been charged in connection with the investigation. The leader of Los Choneros gang escaped incarceration once before for several weeks in 2013. And although never directly accused, many suspect he or his gang were behind the assassination of presidential candidate Fernando Villavicencio last year, who said they had threatened him. Days after the murder, Adolfo Messier was moved into a maximum security prison, only to return to lighter security a month later without explanation. He was serving a long sentence for murder, drug trafficking and organized crime in this maximum security prison in the poor city of Guayaquil. But on Sunday, when soldiers raided the center as part of a government crackdown, authorities said he was nowhere to be found. The government launched a major operation to recapture him, so far with no results. In an operation involving more than 3,000 people, the prison has been raided in search of the most wanted prisoner, and the operation continues. A notorious criminal suspected of having played a role in the assassination of presidential candidate Fernando Villavicencio last year, Fito has often defied authorities. He has escaped prison before and recently appeared in this music video, partly filmed inside the jail and sung by his daughter, glorifying his criminal exploits. The signing of the decree has basically allowed authorities to carry out search and rescue operations in this manhunt to try and find Ecuador's most dangerous and most wanted criminal, as he is the leader of the Los Chorrenos. Now, that is a very powerful, very um, large gang in the country and one which has a lot of control in the area, but also inside the prison. So people are wondering if that has some influence on how he escaped. Prisons have increasingly become the arenas of gangland wars in Ecuador, leaving 460 inmates dead since 2021, violently killed in prison riots. In the recent years, Ecuador has been plagued, its overcrowded prisons have been plagued by feuds between rival gang members who are incarcerated, and this has often resulted in really bloody massacres of inmates. Authorities have said that actually more than 400 inmates have died in such clashes since 2021, so a huge number. And this violence, surge and violence, isn't just inside the prisons, but also outside. And this is because um, there's fighting between drug cartels, over control of cocaine routes to the US and to Europe. So there's a huge swell of violence. Following Fito's escape, incidents have been reported in several prisons across the country. Inmates were seen standing on roofs as they held prison guards hostage inside, threatening them with knives. Mr. President, please reconsider your decisions. Don't let yourself be driven by impulses and false expectations. Prisoners revolted in six other prisons across the country, with guards even taken hostage in some facilities like this one in Cuenca, reflecting the power narco gangs wield within prisons, where many continue to run their illicit empires on the outside, while still calling the shots on the inside. President Noboa, in office since just November, made addressing violent crime and drug trafficking a focus of his campaign. And with the fugitive considered extremely dangerous, the president has declared a 60-day state of emergency and ordered raids on prisons. Ecuadorians, the time when those convicted of drug trafficking, contract killings and organized crime dictated to the government in power what to do is over. What we are seeing in the country's prisons is the result of the decision to confront them.
This is why we and the government have taken action to regain control of prisons that have been lost in recent years. President uh, Daniel Noboa ordered the armed forces and police to take control of the country's prisons. I've given clear instructions to the police and military commanders to intervene in the control of prisons. I've just signed a state of emergency decree so that armed forces have complete political and legal support in their actions. The military and police have also been raiding detention facilities throughout the country. They released a video showing detainees at a rehabilitation center stripped down to underwear for weapons search. As gangs, like the one Fito heads, fight over who will control major cocaine routes, many here fear the prison security crisis will spiral further. The 35-year-old president, who began his term less than two months ago, named 22 gangs as terrorist organizations and military targets. A partir de este momento, From this moment, every terrorist group mentioned in the decree has become a military target. The present and future of our country is at play. We will not desist or negotiate. Armed men in balaclavas interrupted a live TV broadcast in Ecuador on Tuesday. The masked men were seen telling staff of the television station TC to get on the floor. Jorge Rendon was there working as a presenter. They shot one of our cameramen in the leg, broke the arm of another one. They fired bullets, they used their weapons inside. The subjects were heavily armed, had long-range weapons and wore balaclavas. The live footage showed hooded armed men storming this TV station in Guayaquil and taking the host and crew hostage. Shots were heard on the set as journalists begged not to be harmed. Police snipers were positioned outside of the TV station. Inside, another man has several guns pointed at him as people shout for police to leave. Ecuador police have just arrested several men in relation to this attack. Uh, this all happened live on air, those confronting scenes of men in balaclava, in balaclavas holding uh, what appears to be uh, bombs. They are heard yelling that they have bombs. Gunshots were also heard ringing out. The network worker was broadcasting for about 15 minutes before the signal was cut. There was also vision coming through on social media of the hostages being held at gunpoint. These workers pleading for their lives. There has been explosions around the country, car fires started and the abduction of several police officers. It's not sure, it's not clear rather, if this television network storming uh, is connected to those wider countrywide attacks. The police arrested 13 gunmen who allegedly took over the television station and freed the hostages. It was the most brazen attack in a day of chaos across Ecuador. Gang members detonated car bombs, attacked universities and kidnapped or killed policemen in several cities in a declaration of war against the government of President Daniel Noboa and his attempts at a security crackdown. The violence broke out in the coastal city of Guayaquil in Esmeralda but has extended to the capital Quito and even to safe and peaceful tourist locations like Cuenca. Banana Fortune heir Daniel Noboa won Ecuador's presidential election. The 35-year-old now faces a heavy task in rebuilding the South American country, which is struggling with rising crime and a weak economy since the pandemic. The same things that have motivated thousands to migrate. Flanked by heavily armed guards, Noboa spoke to supporters after his victory was confirmed. Tomorrow we start work for this new Ecuador. We start working to rebuild a country seriously battered by violence, by corruption and by hate. From tomorrow, hope will start working. From tomorrow, Daniel Noboa starts work as your new president. Noboa's victory also fulfills a long-held family ambition for the presidency. After his father, Banana Baron Alvaro Noboa, fell short in multiple bids for top office. However, he'll have a short term of only 17 months to fix the flailing economy and address a spike in violence. It reached a crescendo on the campaign trail with the murder of anti-corruption candidate Fernando Villavicencio, 
who was assassinated while leaving a campaign event in August. Presidential candidate Fernando Villavicencio was first a journalist and then a presidential candidate. Uh, in between, he served in the Congress here in Ecuador. He's somebody who, in his journalism, investigated corruption. Uh, he severely investigated the former president of Ecuador. Uh, he unearthed things that led to a conviction of former President Rafael Correa. He also investigated you know, politicians in Colombia as well. The drug cartels have too much power and, and are trying to control the politics. Naboa has pledged several measures to tackle crime, including forming a new intelligence unit and prison ships to house the country's most dangerous convicts. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because there is a lot going on in Ecuador right now. And if you've been following the channel, you'll know that I've been covering El Salvador, which had a similar gang problem over the last 10 years or so, but has really been cleaned up quite well by the current president. It isn't exactly sorted. They still have issues with gangs, but the current issues in El Salvador are significantly less than they were three or four years ago. It used to have the highest homicide rate in the world, but it's now down to around number four. And one of the reasons that Ecuador does have such a big gang problem is because it's a stop-off point, a collection point for a lot of drugs that are being produced elsewhere in South America before those drugs are transported on to the USA. So the gangs on the streets of Ecuador are being supported both financially and also being armed by drug cartels from places like Mexico and Colombia. So that's obviously quite a big task to be able to clean that up. Now, the new president who's come in, Daniel Naboa, has stated that it's his number one target to try to reduce the problems with the gangs. And he's already said that he wants to build a mega prison similar to what they have in El Salvador. And the news that he wants to both clean up the streets and build a mega prison has obviously gone down very badly with the gangs in Ecuador. And they've decided to spring their leader, Fito. Now, nobody really knows where he is at the moment, all we know is that he's no longer in prison. He was actually due to be moved to a high security prison and the day before that happened, he disappeared. So obviously this was orchestrated by people both inside the prison and outside. Now, as you saw in today's video, the response from David Naboa to this escape was to declare a state of emergency. And as a result of all of the riots that then started occurring in the prisons, he also brought in a new law, giving the military power to be able to go into the prisons and close everything down. So this is essentially like martial law that's been introduced in Ecuador. So David Naboa has shown that he's prepared to fight fire with fire. But unfortunately, at the moment, all that's resulting in is chaos on the streets of Ecuador and the ordinary citizens are terrified. Everybody is very concerned about what's going to happen. And I think over the course of the next three to six months, we're going to see that chaos continuing because it's going to be very difficult for Ecuador to be able to arrest everybody overnight. They don't have the mega prison that El Salvador has. It's not ready. It might be in construction, but it's certainly not ready to take tens of thousands of prisoners. And the other problem problem that Ecuador has right now is that the prisons are currently run by the gangs. And that was a problem that they also had in El Salvador. And President Nayib Bukele has managed to break that. He's managed to change the system so that the gangs are no longer able to operate from inside prison. But until Ecuador gets to that situation, they're going to struggle to be able to keep control of the situation, both on the streets and also in prison. So as I said, I wanted to post this video because I think what's happening in Ecuador is really quite interesting. It's just the start of the process. If David Naboa is committed to cleaning up the streets and taking these gangs out of the equation, it's going to take a lot of commitment and determination. And he's going to need the support of the police and the military. And it'll be interesting to see just how quickly he's able to achieve his goals and what the gangs do about it over the course of the next three to six months. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's slightly different video. If you did, please let me know in the comments below and also give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.